So welcome to course on advanced geotechnical engineering module 7 lecture number 4. This is lecture number 4 on geotechnical physical modeling. So uh, in, in the previous lecture we have discussed about uh, variation of uh, G level or uh, gravity level with the horizontal distance as well as with the depth. In this particular slide the merit of a large centrifuge is shown. So here if you look into it there is a radius which is 1 meter from the center of the shaft to a certain point within the model. Similarly here this radius is about 4 meter. So if you look into it there is a, you know variation with the horizontal distance but is uh, limited but in the case when you take a radius of 1 meter here it is 45 gravities and here it is 47.4 gravities. So there is a, a variation of uh, G level with the horizontal distance. Similarly here it is 45 gravities at the bottom it is 55 gravities. So because here it is RT omega square and here it is RT plus 0.2 omega square but whereas if you have a large beam centrifuge the variation G level is exists uh, is a, um, the variation of the G level is prevalent but however the variation is uh, negligible. So this actually shows uh, uh, the merit of uh, large beam centrifuge and here in this slide uh, the whatever we have discussed uh, about uh, uh, you know the in the, in the normal uh, pr prototype when you have got a soil strata which is having certain thickness and uh, because of the self weight the vertical stress is uh, sigma v and the horizontal stress if it is normally consolidated soil the distribution is shown here. But if the model if the same prototype soil is brought and the model is constructed with a reduced uh, thickness and uh, subjected to radial acceleration field then uh, what we have discussed is that the variation of the vertical stress with the depth is not linear is non-linear. Then we said that this is uh, going to cause uh, certain uh, degree of under stress in the upper half portion or upper portion and wall stress in the bottom portion. So this uh, variation is arised because of the variation of the uh, G level with the depth. So you can see that uh, there in this particular uh, uh, slide and this particular diagram where actually this particular uh, uh, you know uh, uh, line shows the distribution of vertical stress uh, as per the uh, uh, full scale conditions is concerned. But if you look into this this is uh, there is a non-linear variation of the uh, vertical stress in the model due to radial acceleration field. And uh, before going further and uh, we also have uh, discussed about uh, uh, you know two possibilities of uh, you know increasing the uh, gamma one is that uh, variation of uh, uh, gamma by increasing the CPS forces that we said that hydraulic gradient simulated method and uh, in the centrifuge model test we said that this can be possible by subjecting a model to high gravities this is uh, done by rotating a rotating about a vertical axis in a horizontal plane. So if you compare the basic uh, uh, principle one is that uh, in centrifuge model test uh, the centripetal forces acts towards the center and in case of uh, so there is in, in centrifuge uh, uh, model test centripetal forces act on the model and hydraulic gradient test CPS forces act and uh, in the porous material soil the self weight stress is increased and in the hydraulic gradient also we have the self weight stress increase and a solid structure member it can be a pile member or it can be footing member it can be retaining wall it can be any member which is being tested. The self weight stresses also increased in case of centrifuge model test but whereas in case of hydraulic gradient test and which is not done that is that self weight stresses are not affected they remain same. And the application in the sense that there are more general problems 
uh, most complicated problems the construction process can be simulated or uh, some climatic events can be simulated like rainfall or subjected to earthquake or combination of the different loading forces can be simulated in centrifuge model test which we are going to discuss in some selected uh, applications. And as far as uh, hydraulic gradient uh, test is concerned we said that this is mostly used for uh, you know granular soils or sandy soils and problems with the level ground and the sulphate of the structure member is not important and uh, where, wherever uh, the sulphate of the structure is not important and where you have got uh, uh, you know problems with the level ground like you know let us say that uh, footing resting on uh, horizontal uh, uh, surface and uh, or uh, problems with uh, like uh, uplift behavior of uh, piles subjected to uh, you know uh, that uh, uh, uplift behavior of piles embedded in sa sandy soils similarly when you have got some uh, problems like uh, footing subjected to eccentric loads on a leveled ground these things can be studied by using uh, the hydraulic gradient similitude method. So this uh, particular uh, slide gives comparison of hydraulic gradient uh, similitude method simul hydraulic, hydraulic gradient similitude method and centrifuge model tests. And we said that as far as the centrifuge model tests are concerned two categories of uh, tests do exist one is called variable gravity level the other one is called uh, constant gravity level the mostly the constant gravity level uh, is adopted and uh, in the previous discussion we have uh, discussed that when the uh, you know gravity reaches to a constant level that means that uh, a particular desired gravity then uh, the, uh, when the when the gravity reaches to a certain uh, level then what we can do is that uh, you know the angular velocity is maintained constant so the tangential component uh, of the acceleration will be zero and uh, secondly uh, if the, the particularly the model being tested has to be safe up to that particular gravity level which is being tested then it can be subjected to uh, some sort of loading or some sort of uh, construction process or some, uh, some sort of effect due to some of, uh, forces like uh, uh, wave forces or uh, some earthquake forces etc. Whereas in case if you are interested in studying some uh, collapse behavior of a certain structure like uh, you know some uh, collapse behavior of a some vertical cut or uh, some uh, slope which is being studied uh, wherein it can be studied with the variable gravity level. So here the gravity level is increased gradually at a certain uh, speed and uh, the speed at which uh, this uh, is settled for example if you are uh, uh, the increase it has to be you know uh, keep in mind with uh, the desired uh, conditions like undrained conditions and uh, if you are required to have then the waiting times also have to be small. So here this is uh, you know a certain gravity level and then this is another gravity level and then uh, up to the collapse or uh, failure which are actually occurred earlier. So this is called a variable gravity level but each and every gravity level uh, you know the model actually behaves uh, like a prototype that means that if you are actually having uh, a sandy model sandy soil model uh, uh, in dry sand model the generation of pore water pressures uh, will not be there if you are having a dry sandy soil. So up to some extent uh, like uh, a reinforced slope constructed with the sandy soil where uh, uh, if you are interested in collapse behavior of a uh, reinforced slope uh, constructed with sandy soil they can be studied but each and every gravity level when they are subjected to they are subjected they are uh, equivalent to uh, equivalent prototype uh, with respect to that particular gravity level. So this is uh, the two categories of tests uh, one is called variable gravity level and uh, constant gravity level but nowadays with, uh, uh, with the development of uh, different uh, actuator systems and uh, you know uh, rainfall triggering events or earthquake triggering events the constant gravity, gravity tests are uh, you know adopted widely. So the possibility of the geotechnical centrifuge studies include uh, we can actually model a prototype that is that if you are actually uh, interested in understanding a particular prototype structure which has been constructed whether uh, you know it is safe or not or what will be its performance after 5 years or 10 years of its uh, life can be you know uh, studied by using uh, uh, you know this uh, centrifuge based physical modeling technique 
but however uh, the size of the model depends upon the size of the equipment which is being, being used for the purpose. So if the equipment is reasonably large and then large prototypes can be modeled uh, very well by simulating the majority of the uh, you know characteristics of the prototype in the model. The another uh, possibility uh, of geotechnical centrifuge studies is that investigation of new phenomenon that means that a new technique or a or uh, can be you know studied by using this uh, uh, centrifuge based physical modeling wherein uh, you know this helps to draw guidelines and then to also uh, to assess its uh, performance uh, over a period of time that is before failure and at failure and uh, also lead to you know the improvement of the or uh, you know the phenomenon being investigated. So this is uh, you know very interesting where a new phenomenon can be studied uh, uh, very efficiently uh, by using uh, centrifuge based physical modeling. Then another uh, possibility is that parametric studies. So if you have if we have studied for a certain, certain uh, uh, you know dimensions then we wanted to know what will happen to the next level see the parametric study or parametric variation is very very uh, efficient and uh, can be studied uh, uh, you know efficiently in uh, geotechnical centrifuge modeling. Then uh, as uh, said earlier the numerical models are required to be validated mostly they are validated by using uh, full scale physical models in the case of uh, you know uh, uh, non feasibility of uh, constructing full scale physical models uh, let us say in certain areas like uh, nuclear installations or where there is no um, access uh, for constructing or feasibility to construct uh, these uh, full scale structures then uh, you know the numerical models are required to be validated so one of the avenues is that to you to perform series of uh, centrifuge based physical model tests and uh, uh, corroborate or uh, see how the results numerical model results are actually comparable with uh, the centrifuge model test results so th uh, that will actually help to validate numerical models the another uh, important application is that use of uh, geotechnical uh, centrifuges for geotechnical engineering instruction that is something like called uh, centrifuge aided uh, learning in geotechnical engineering centrifuge aided learning in geotechnical engineering. So after having discussed the possibility of the geotechnical centrifuge studies and we said that uh, by subjecting a model to uh, about a vertical axis. Uh, you know uh, in a in a rotational plane there is a possibility of this radial acceleration field effects are there. So these effects actually what we said is that you know affect the vertical stress and uh, then consequently they affect also the horizontal stress distribution. So the earth's gravity is uniform for the practical range of soil depths encountered in engineering like up to 200 meters or 300 depths of uh, you know what we encounter for soil investigations in uh, civil engineering the earth's gravity is uniform for the practical range of soil depths encountered in civil engineering. So while using a centrifuge to generate high acceleration field required for physical modeling there is a variation of acceleration through the model so that is what actually we have been discussing. Uh, while using a centrifuge to generate high gravities because we wanted to have identical stresses as that in the prototype the, there is a variation of acceleration through the model. So what we said is that this is attributed to the inertial acceleration field given by r omega square this is the inertial acceleration field this is due to the inertial acceleration field uh, given by r omega square where r is the radius from the center to a certain point within the model. So this apparent problem turns out to be minor if we are able to take care of the you know the hardware that is the radius of the equipment at which the gravity scale factor n is uh, determined and uh, this also uh, this operating radius that is called an effective radius we are able to select properly then we can say that that particular point the stresses in model and prototype are uh, identical. So this apparent problem uh, turns out to be minor if care is taken to select the radius at which the gravity scale factor n is determined. So for that what we need to do is that we have to uh, find out uh, you know how the variation of uh, uh, and, uh, variation of the gravity level is there with the depth and where it is subjected to uh, with the vertical stress distribution where it is subjected to under stress and war stress and then comparing the errors then we can actually lead to uh, you know the point at which we can actually uh, you know maintain this uh, uh, gravity level uh, can be ascertained. So 
the selection of the effective radius for a uh, you know beam centrifuge uh, like you know consider a model rotating about a vertical axis which is uh, shown here and uh, the model is constructed with a material having a rho density uh, the mass density rho and uh, this is the uh, center of the shaft the model is rotating about a vertical axis and a capital V is the uh, velocity in this direction and uh, this is small element dz selected at a depth z from the top surface and rt is the radius from the center of the shaft to top surface of the model. So if you look into this what we can do is that uh, this is the uh, uh, you know the stress in the uh, and, and the, this is the stress, stress ordinate and this is the uh, depth here in this direction. So here this is the you know the prototype stress distribution and this is uh, the radial uh, the uh, vertical stress distribution in the radial acceleration field in the centrifuge model you can see that this portion there is an under stress and this portion there is an over stress. So this, uh, this could be understood uh, because that uh, because of the increasing gravity level at this depth there is an over stress is possible. So in order to determine this what we do is that uh, again by following the same principle uh, d sigma v in the small stress which we can actually find out uh, by uh, uh, writing like d sigma v is equal to rho into uh, z into uh, d, uh, d, d sigma v can be found out and from there by integrating from uh, 0 to hm we can actually get uh, uh, rho omega square hm into rt plus hm by 2. So uh, what we have is that this one. And now here if the same point HM uh, if you are able to find out uh, you know what is the uh, stress in the prototype. So at this level we can actually find out it is nothing but rho into uh, G that is the normal gravity the HM is correspondingly in the prototype is n times HM so rho G into NHM. So at the uh, uh, so the area of the stress diagram in the prototype is nothing but half base that is uh, you know rho g nhm into hm so half rho g nhm into hm that is this is the area of the stress diagram now the, this area of the stress diagram in the model can be found out by integrating from 0 to hm so the area of the uh, stress diagram can be uh, obtained like this uh, wherein uh, this is uh, by writing am is equal to 0 to hm uh, rho, rho omega square z into rt plus z by 2 into dz. So this is actually uh, it is nothing but 0 to hm d sigma v. Uh, so by writing uh, the rho omega square uh, that is rt plus z by 2 omega square is nothing but the acceleration and uh, dz is uh, nothing but uh, uh, you know the, the thickness of the uh, uh, element which is under consideration. So by uh, integrating this what we get is that and then applying the limits rho uh, the uh, rho omega square is equal to rt hm square by 2 plus hm cube by 6. Now by equating the two areas of stress diagrams in centrifuge model and the prototype and by using ng is equal to ru omega square this re is called the effective radius which is measured from the center of the shaft to a point within the model where we are actually going to find out the equivalency of the stresses are there. Now what we have done is that by equating the areas of the stress diagrams in uh, centrifuge model in the stress area of the stress diagram in the uh, uh, prototype then what we get is that Re is equal to Rt plus Hm by 3 by simplifying and uh, substituting for Ng is equal to Re omega square we get Re is equal to Rt plus Hm by 3. Then for finding out the location where maximum under stress occurs what we do is that now assume that uh, uh, the it occurs at a distance x from the surface. So that means that uh, we are now assuming you know at a distance x uh, you know below the surface the notation is different here it is uh, just to express in terms of fun function x it is written in terms of uh, you know uh, vertical distance x here. Now d sigma which is nothing but rho ng x that means nothing but the x which is uh, it is nothing but uh, the ordinate of uh, at a particular depth x below the surface 
of the model uh, that x is uh, multiplied with n to get the prototype stress equivalent stress and g level is uh, uh, g and so rho g into n x minus rho omega square into x into rt plus x by 2. So this is nothing but uh, the, uh, the vertical stress in the model at a depth x in the model. Now that is nothing but the d sigma the difference between uh, prototype stress and uh, vertical that is that we, which we are trying to find out the difference between a stress here and a stress here. This is the stress in the prototype this is the stress in the centrifuge model. Now uh, by taking differentiation of this by taking the, uh, this as function x rho ng x minus rho omega square x into rt plus x by 2 uh, by taking function x uh, uh, f dash x we can write that it is rho ng minus rho omega square rt minus rho omega square uh, that is uh, 2x by 2 uh, it is reduced to rho omega square into x. So for d sigma to be maximum f dash x has to be maximum by applying the rules of uh, maxima and minima we can say that for d sigma to be maximum f dash x is equal to 0. Then with uh, r e is equal to r t plus h m by 3 and uh, simplifying uh, by simplifying uh, we get uh, this x is equal to h m by 3 that means that uh, and again if you look into it with x is equal to 2 h m by 3 when you substitute x is equal to 2 h m by 3 in this uh, particular expression what do you get is that d sigma is equal to 0 d sigma is equal to 0 this implies that uh, the, this term and this term will be equal and then it will be equal to 0 that means that uh, that implies that at that particular point x is equal to 2 h m by 3 sigma v in model is equal to sigma v in prototype that is where the point where uh, the centrifuge stress uh, uh, the distribution of a vertical stress in the centrifuge model crosses the uh, you know the vertical stress distribution in the prototype. So when you look back into the figure so this is that point from the surface it is actually said as 2 h by 3 2 h m by 3 and this is h m and this is actually at 50 percent of the uh, height of this point at which this is crossing where the maximum under stress is occurring that is where actually what we have located is x is equal to h m by 3. Then now we can actually find out the resulting errors after having known uh, the location of the uh, you know uh, where uh, under stress is maximum and where the uh, sigma v in model in prototype are equal then what we can do is that uh, uh, after having uh, so uh, at x is equal to h m by 3 that is the where the maximum under stress error is possible that is defined as d sigma by sigma v prototype. So by writing the expression with x is equal to h m by 3 we can write rho h m by 3 uh, into n into g minus rho omega square h m by 3 into r t plus h m by 6 uh, divided by uh, rho n g into h m by 3. So by uh, simplifying uh, you know these uh, uh, this particular uh, expression which is written and substituting for uh, n g is equal to r u omega square we get h m by 6 r e. So the percentage under stress error uh, resulting is h m by 6 r e and uh, similarly at x is equal to h m at x is equal to h m the war stress error d sigma by sigma v p is equal to rho omega square h m into r t plus h m by 2 minus rho n g h m divided by rho n g h m which also we will get it as h m by 6 r e. So as we have equated the uh, you know areas of the uh, we have determined the effective radius by equating the areas in uh, in the centrifuge uh, area of this uh, stress diagrams in centrifuge model as well as in the prototype we get the percentage under stress uh, and percentage of over stress as h m by 6 r e. So this implies that using this rule uh, we can actually find out there is exact correspondence in stress in the model and prototype at two thirds of the model depth and effective centrifuge radius should be measured from the central axis to the one third depth of the model from the top surface. So generally there are they do a number of interpretations they do exist and so this actually says that uh, R, RE is equal to RT plus uh, one third of the HM that is 0.33 times HM but there are also some uh, other uh, uh, you know uh, investigators have uh, presented uh, this uh, RE is equal to RT plus uh, somewhere like uh, 0.4 times uh, 0.4 times HM 
uh, measured from the top surface. So using this rule uh, there is exact correspondence in stresses between model and prototype at two thirds model depth and the effective centrifuge radius should be measured from the central axis to the one third depth of the model. So and then another thing is that maximum error uh, in, the, uh, in the model uh, is, is given by RU is equal to R0 that is HM by 6 RE. So maximum error due to either under stress or over stress is given by HM by 6 RE. So for most of the geotechnical centrifuges HM by RE if it is less than 0.2 HM by RE less than 0.2 and therefore the maximum error in the stress profile is minor that means that uh, if the uh, HM by RE is less than 0.2 and uh, if the, then the maximum error in the stress profile is minor and generally less than 3 percent of the prototype stress. So for most geotechnical centrifuge, uh, uh, centrifuges HM by RE if it is maintained, maintained as 0.2 then what you can see is that 0.2 by 6 that is uh, into 100 about 3.33 percent the, the stress is the variation the stress is minor. If suppose uh, HM by RE let us say is uh, equal to 0.5 or something like that the stress will be high and is greater than 3 percent. So uh, the for the uh, if you look into the uh, centrifuges like about 1.5 meter radius onwards what we can see is that we will be able to ensure that for uh, except for uh, uh, certain models the uh, HM by RE uh, can be maintained as uh, less than 0.2. So this actually ensures that the variation in the vertical stress uh, uh, is maintained within the limits and uh, this apparent error due to radial acceleration field on the vertical stress can be minimized. So in the example problem whatever we have discussed uh, just now an example problem is given here in a 1 by 50th centrifuge model same material is used as that of in the prototype that means that the rho in model and prototype are identical and model of the height HM is subjected to rotation with a constant angular velocity omega about a central axis. If RT is equal to 4 meter obtain the variation of vertical stress with depth at every 50 mm in the centrifuge model and compare vertical stress in model and prototype at 50 mm, 300 mm, 150 mm, 300 mm and 450 mm depths respectively. So here what we need to do is that the RT is given that is 4 meters then height of the model is uh, about 450 mm. So what we can do is that uh, uh, by the height of the model uh, which is, uh, is, uh, uh, is about 450 mm and uh, that uh, by knowing that what we can do is that RE is equal to RT is equal to uh, 4 plus uh, uh, HM by 3 point, uh, 0.45 by 3. So RE is equal to uh, 0.15 so plus 4 then RT is equal to 4.15 meters and uh, by knowing N that is equal to 50 so 50 into 9.81 is equal to 4.95 omega square you can actually find out omega you will get it in uh, radians per second and uh, if you would like to convert this omega uh, the from radian, sec radian per second to uh, RPM but it should be multiplied by uh, 60 by 2 pi. And uh, for converting from RPM to radians per second uh, uh, multiply by uh, 2 pi by 60. Uh, so for uh, by knowing uh, omega now by writing the depths and uh, for writing the stresses in model and prototype at uh, different depths we can find out uh, what is the variation of vertical stress uh, in the model as well as in the prototype. So if you look into it by at the depth exactly at 2 hm by 3 that is 2 into 450 uh, divided by 3 that is around 300 mm you will see that uh, the stresses in model and prototype are identical that is where the d sigma will be 0 and at a depth of uh, uh, one uh, that is uh, uh, a depth around uh, uh, 150 mm you will see that the under stress error is maximum and at depth hm that is at the base of the model uh, that is hm is equal to 450 mm you will see that uh, the uh, vertical stress in the model is more than the prototype stress. So we can also find out by knowing uh, uh, 450 that is 0 0.45 uh, that is HM divided by 6 into uh, 4.15 you can also calculate what is the percentage error due to variation variation in the vertical stress due to radial acceleration field. So this is how the, the solution for this problem runs uh, and then uh, for calculating the, the stresses the appropriate units for, uh, by 
need to be used for uh, by while substituting rho is equal to 2000 kg per meter cube. So verification of the static equilibrium of, equilibrium of a centrifuge model. So here what we have said is that uh, we said that now the vertical stresses variations uh, they do exist but let us see that uh, we have uh, you know a prototype and if you are having a certain uh, element under equilibrium so we need to satisfy or check whether the static equilibrium equations are satisfied or not. Uh, then we can say that you know uh, the model material response will be equivalent to as that in the uh, prototype. So consider an embankment uh, which is uh, uh, shown here and uh, this uh, dimension is uh, length L and these are the x axis and y axis and uh, it is actually has uh, you know seepage as well as uh, it is subjected to some uh, body forces due to seepage as well as the sulphate forces and consider an element within the model at a certain depth as shown here. So assume that the same model is reduced by 1 by n times by maintaining this length as L by n and maintaining this gravity as ng that means that we and this all dimensions has been reduced and then here this element is actually having sizes of dx dy dz similarly here uh, with the same density both the models are constructed with same mass density and uh, here the volume of the element which is considered is dx dy dz by n cube uh, dx uh, dy dz and here it is by reducing by 1 by uh, n times that is dx dy dz by n cube. So uh, this model represents the uh, representative conditions of the prototype. Now what we do is that uh, considering a two dimensional uh, equilibrium uh, let us see uh, what will happen when you wanted to derive the static equilibrium of a uh, centrifuge model. So consider infinitesimally small element having dimensions dx dy dz in prototype that is what we have been discussing that re representing homogeneous isotropic elastic continuum and where uh, x and y which are actually shown here they are the unit weights uh, due to body forces in x and y direction and x could be due to seepage and y could be due to self weight of the forces. So then we have, we have uh, the assume that is a two dimensional element when it is subjected to uh, the horizontal stresses and vertical stresses. So here uh, this particular uh, uh, this is the rate of change of the stress because of that there is an increase in stress. So which is nothing but uh, sigma xx plus dou sigma xx by dou x into dx and uh, this is this stress direction is sigma xs we, we have considered the elements in uh, tension. Similarly uh, the stresses in y direction here it is sigma yy plus dou sigma y by uh, dou y into dy this is sigma y. So uh, this x the body force acting in the x direction this y body force due to self weight acting in the y direction and this is the uh, you know sign convention x is positive in this direction y is positive in this direction. Now we have shear stresses the conjugate shear stresses here tau y x plus dou y x by dou x into dx and here tau y x tau y x and here it is tau x y plus dou x y dou tau x y by dou y into dy by tau x y that is here. So when we consider now the equilibrium of you know the force equilibrium like fx fy and mx and my when you take moments about the center. So you will get that uh, tau x y is equal to uh, tau y x and uh, by using sigma f x is equal to 0 sigma f y is equal to 0 uh, what we get is that uh, by, uh, by e for equilibrium what we uh, for the equilibrium of the element is that we have to ensure because it is a two dimensional uh, sigma f x is equal to 0 sigma f y is equal to 0 and sigma m x is equal to m y is equal to 0. Now taking moments of the center of the element we get tau x y is equal to tau y x. Now with uh, sigma fx is equal to 0 uh, what we can do is that sigma uh, fx is equal to 0. So here sigma fx is nothing but sigma xx uh, sigma xx plus tau uh, xx tau sigma xx by tau x into dx uh, this is uh, you know acting on the area uh, which is uh, nothing but uh, dy dz. Similarly here sigma xx uh, stress acting on the area dy dz. So the net net force is nothing but dou tau dou sigma xx by dou x into dx dy dz. 
so if you multiply if you subtract this one similarly uh, when you take uh, the forces in the shear stresses in this direction and the body forces in this direction and uh, simplifying the uh, uh, after simplification what we get is that dx dy dz into do sigma xx by do x plus do uh, tau xy by do y plus x is equal to 0. So this uh, particular uh, uh, you know expression uh, uh, here we write it as do sigma xx by do x plus do uh, tau xy by do y plus x is equal to 0 because as dx dy dz volume of the element cannot be equal to 0. So this is equilibrium equation in the x direction where it is uh, read as do sigma xx by do x plus do tau xy by do y plus x is equal to 0. Similarly when you look into sigma fy is equal to 0 in the vertical in the y direction and simplifying the different forces what we write. So what we get is that do sigma yy by do y plus do tau yx by do x plus y is equal to 0. So this is again as dx dy dz cannot be equal to 0 what we write is that we can write this equation equilibrium equation in the so the equilibrium equations for a model in the for the prototype is nothing but the two equations one is here in the x y direction which is actually shown. So in the case of ng model considering that the small element having a volume dx dy dz by n cube it yields now what we get is that do sigma xx by do x by n plus do xy by do y by n plus nx is equal to 0 uh, and then uh, in the uh, y axis do sigma yy by do y by n plus do tau yx by do x by n plus ny is equal to 0. So this x and y are nothing but the body forces are equal unit weights in x direction and y direction that is the reason why they get multiplied by n. Now, uh, with that uh, what it actually uh, if you look into this previous expression uh, by uh, simplifying this the n will get uh, cancelled n cannot be equal to 0. So do sigma x by do x plus do tau x y by do y plus x is equal to 0 do sigma y by do y plus do tau x by do x plus n y uh, plus y is equal to 0. So these equations whatever we have got for prototype are analogous to the one what we have got in the centrifuge model. So this indicates that the centrifuge based physical model satisfies the static equilibrium conditions what they are actually existing in the equivalent prototype. So what we have actually reduced from this discussion that for convenience we actually have taken a two dimensional case and where we have written the forces in the x and y direction only and we have taken sigma fx is equal to 0, sigma fi is equal to 0 and by simplifying we what we have reduced is that we reduced the equilibrium equations in the x and y direction and we afterwards we converted them to ng model and considering a small element having a volume dx dy dz by n cube it yields the equations which are actually identical to those in the prototype. So we can say that the static equilibrium conditions of the centrifuge model are satisfied. So whatever the change of boundary values is considered the solution of differential equations will not distinguish, distinguish between model and prototype provided that the materials and system at corresponding points in model prototype can be made behave identically. So what we have noted is that whatever be the change of boundary values is considered the solution of uh, differential equations will not distinguish between model and prototype provided that the materials and systems at uh, corresponding points in model and prototype can be made behave identically. Now in the limitations of uh, you know after having discussed uh, the uh, like how the vertical stress can be minimized uh, due to radial acceleration field and uh, also uh, how uh, we can actually can satisfy the static equilibrium equations of uh, a prototype in a uh, centrifuge model. Now let us look into uh, limitations like any modeling technique the centrifuge model physical based physical modeling technique also suffers from some limitations like non homogeneity and anisotropy of soil profiles is difficult to model and uh, limitations of some modeling tools the sizes and all those things required to be considered and variation of g level with the horizontal distance and depth of the model. So this we said that uh, whatever may be, whether it is a beam centrifuge or drum centrifuge the variation of the g level with the depth cannot be eliminated but however in case of a drum centrifuge 
we can actually say that the variation of the G-level with the horizontal distance uh, especially for uh, small centrifuges can be emulated uh, because uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, curvature of the model. But similarly even in beam centrifuges also for slope model some, for example some investigators like Kumura et al in 1991 they have given the curvature for the top surface of the slopes to suit this curvature of the centrifuges. And this is basically done to eliminate the variation of the G level with the horizontal distance. And then the boundary effects uh, the models particularly especially the sand soil, sandy soils uh, they, they exhibit uh, uh, you know very severe boundary effects that is nothing but the friction due to, uh, friction due to uh, soil and the containers of the inner sides of the containers of the uh, walls of the container. So this need to be eliminated by a special techniques particularly like uh, applying a uh, white petroleum uh, uh, grease or a lubricating agent uh, without affecting the, the transparency of the uh, you know the front view uh, uh, tra uh, transparent uh, glass uh, wall uh, and by applying a sheets in a special way we can uh, you know eliminate this uh, friction angle up to uh, reduce this up to uh, you know to in a, in a in a big way. So the boundary effects are important and need to be controlled especially for sandy soil models. In case of we are having a plast high plastic soils there is a you know this need to be arrested by applying uh, uh, the by lubricating the inner sides of the uh, containers so that uh, the boundary effects are minimized due to adhesion due in case of clays. In case of sandy soils due to friction between the wall and the sand grains or sand grains. Then another thing is that uh, these uh, models they subject to scale effects particularly one of the predominant effects which we actually have uh, discussed is that because of the our inability to not able to model the uh, you know the grain size distribution what we said is that the scale effects are evident that these scale effects are can be minimized and uh, also need to be found out for how they are affect uh, they are affecting the model behavior. So this uh, we have the uh, one of the uh, possible scale effects in the centrifuge based physical model is due to the, the grain size effects or particle size effects and which we will be discussing and how this can be solved uh, or uh, attended uh, by uh, using the same centrifuge based physical modeling technique that is nothing but uh, what we call the modeling of models. Then when we are actually reducing uh, uh, you know times uh, scale factors for the time we will find that you know each and every phenomenon when it changes for example if it is for a sea phase force or if it is for, for uh, something like for a dynamic time or if it is for a some uh, uh, you know for viscous force you actually have we have different uh, timings timing uh, different uh, uh, scale factors for the time. So this inconsistency of the scale factors for the time is also uh, said as uh, uh, you know one of the limitations. Sometimes uh, you know when we have got uh, scale factors for the time for some dynamic cases as well as for the uh, you know some diffusion cases when they are different and if the phenomenon occurs simultaneously then we actually have to resort to some sort of uh, you know an alternative so that the scaling considerations are satisfied. Then uh, one of the, uh, the major effects particularly the effect which is called the Coriolis effect which is actually called uh, due, uh, caused due to movement of uh, uh, you know particle within the uh, model. If this uh, suppose if that uh, uh, velocity with which the particle is actually moving is say v and when you are actually comparing with the velocity with which the model is rotating then we have to see that how this Coriolis effect can be uh, you know uh, considered. So let us look into this particular Coriolis effect in depth and what is the theory behind this Coriolis effect. So what we said is that the Coriolis effect which is nothing but it is the effect caused by the radial acceleration this is again the effect caused by the radial acceleration field when there is a movement of the model in the plane of rotation. So this movement of the model can actually occur because of certain like some certain construction process like assume that we are having a, a soft soil bed and with, with certain stress history and there we wanted to construct an embankment because in the construction of embankment on the soft soil happens in different stages. So let us say that we are actually simulating that so that for that 
what we do is that we uh, use the sand hopper technique. So in flight sand hopper is used. So when the particle is released uh, in the when the particles are released sand particles released to construct sand embankments during flight. Uh, there is a possibility that these particles are subjected to uh, so called Coriolis uh, acceleration or Coriolis effect. So the construction of embankments of soft soil during centrifuge test and triggering of rainfall during centrifuge test. For example if you wanted to study the effect of rainfall on geotechnical structures when you are actually modeling this the rain droplets when they are actually uh, you know uh, simulated in the form of a mist or a in the models. And these droplets they are subjected to when they are released in the high acceleration field they can be subjected to you know this Coriolis acceleration that is it is basically the Coriolis effect is the effect caused by the radial acceleration field when there is a movement of the model within the plane of rotation. Then another thing is that the subject studies on the geotechnical structure subjected to earthquakes. For example, when the model is subjected to earthquake perturbance due to by with the help of uh, uh, some actuator which can actually induce uh, uh, this uh, phenomenon, then what it does is that this is subjected to the particle uh, velocities uh, are uh, such that they, they you know they can actually get experienced with uh, uh, you know this Coriolis effect. So for some models which is actually required like construction of embankments on uh, soft soils or let us say uh, rainfall when we are studying the rainfall effects on some geotechnical structures or uh, geotechnical structures subjected to earthquake models it is mandatory uh, to check whether the model is actually uh, free from Coriolis effect or not. So in order to understand the theory of uh, the Coriolis effect consider a model rotating about a vertical axis in a horizontal plane what we are seeing is the plan view and here this is the center of the shaft and uh, x and y are the uh, global coordinate coordinates uh, at the center of the shaft and uh, the model is rotating in this direction and this is the velocity v v is equal to r omega where let us say that the this is the radius which is actually up to the uh, element a element which is considered here this is an embankment having the a physical dimension length from the this axis and uh, constructed with a material having a rho so what we need to see is that when this is subjected to the so called perturbance what will happen to the acceleration components in this. So what we need to do is that we have to first express this in the in terms of polar coordinates and try to get the local accelerations at the center of the shaft and then trans by using the method of transformation the transform the local acceleration to the global accelerations to the local accelerations within the model that is the local axis within the model they are x dash and y dash. So now what we do is that the coordinates of x and y can be expressed in radial polar coordinates as x is equal to r cos theta where r is the radius from the center of the shaft the center distance where x and y origin is there to up to, up to the element which is actually considered in the previous slide. So y is equal to r sin theta. So we have x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. So local velocities can be obtained by differentiating this dx by dt is equal to dr by dt cos theta minus r d theta by t sin theta. Similarly dy by dt is equal to dr by dt sin theta plus r d theta, d theta by dt cos theta. So let, the, let this be uh, legended as 1. So these are the local velocities. Then by differentiating once again what we get is the local accelerations but these are with reference to uh, the axis the global axis at the center of the shaft. So the local accelerations are given as d square x by dt square is equal to uh, d square r by dt square cos theta minus 2 dr by dt into d theta by dt sin theta minus r d square theta by dt square sin theta minus r d theta by dt whole square cos theta. So similarly in the y axis d square y by dt square is equal to d square r by dt square sin theta plus 2 dr by dt d theta by dt cos theta plus r d square theta by dt square cos theta minus r d theta by dt whole square sin theta. This is let us listen it as number 2. Now what we do by applying the transformation of uh, uh, from the global axis to local axis 
by method of by applying the method of transformation what we can write is that the basic equation is that x dash so here you can see that one axis is getting transformed from the center of the shaft to the axis within the model which is actually rotating so x dash is along x axis of the model uh, that is horizontal uh, axis of the model y dash is along the vertical axis of the model so we can write x dash is equal to c minus x sin theta plus y cos theta con c is a constant y dash is equal to constant minus x cos theta minus y sin theta so in order to get these uh, things what we do is that uh, to get the local accelerations with respect with reference to uh, axis within the model first you do the uh, differentiation get the dx dash and dt and then uh, after further doing uh, successive differentiation uh, to this what we get is the d square x dash by dt square. So the d square x dash by dt square term works out to be minus d square x by dt square into sin theta plus d square y, y by dt square cos theta. Similarly in the, in the y, direct, y dash direction d square y dash by dt square uh, is equal to minus d square x by dt square cos theta minus d square y by dt square sin theta. So by we know that d square x by dt square d square y by dt square uh, with reference to uh, global coordinates at the center of the shaft. Similarly we also know here and here by substituting and simplifying what we get is that uh, the following terms which is nothing but. Uh, by simplifying the substituting for d square x by dt square and uh, uh, d square y by dt square uh, what we get is the d square x dash by dt square is equal to 2 dr by dt d theta by dt plus r d square theta by dt square. So if you look into it uh, this particular element uh, when it is uh, uh, you know uh, is actually has two components of acceleration uh, one is this 2 dr by dt d theta by dt plus r d square theta d square theta by dt square and uh, similarly we have d square y dash by dt square is equal to minus d square r by dt square plus r d theta by dt whole square. So if you look the um, uh, you know this uh, particular element uh, which is uh, considered in the centrifuge model what we can write is that uh, the, the, this particular term in the horizontal direction that is 2 dr by dt d theta by dt plus r d square theta by dt square that is this particular term. So this particular term is called as the Coriolis acceleration term. So when the model when the when the element is subjected to certain amount of acceleration so what we are actually uh, acceleration field what we see is that there is some lateral acceleration which is actually acting on the element which is actually called as Coriolis uh, term is also called as the Coriolis acceleration term which is nothing but 2 v omega a c a suffix c is indicated as Coriolis acceleration which is nothing but 2 v omega plus this term is due to inertial effect in horizontal direction because uh, we actually assume that this model is subject to, to some sub perturbance with due to some shaking let us say in that case this is actually sub due to inertial effect in horizontal direction when you look into the elements here uh, the when the vertical component d square r by dt square is due to is the inertial, inertial uh, effect in vertical direction then r t theta r d theta by dt which is whole square which is nothing but the ng term that is nothing but r omega square term that acceleration acting towards the, the element acceleration acting towards the center. So here in this particular derivation by taking from global accelerations from global, global coordinates to the local coordinates and the local accelerations have actually expressed as we have that the they have got two components in x direction two components in y direction and uh, in the x direction what we have observed that uh, the, the term which is called as 2v omega that is the uh, local acceleration term um, which is uh, called the Coriolis acceleration term. Then we have the you know the, the Coriolis effect which is actually defined as uh, ratio of uh, Coriolis acceleration to the radial acceleration that is AC by AR. AC by AR so which is nothing but uh, we can write now AC is nothing but uh, 2v omega by AR let us assume that uh, uh, up to this AR which is nothing but like we have discussed uh, uh, the R can be effective radius so it is RE omega square RE omega square. So by simplifying using V omega is equal to V by R or V by RE we can write that Coriolis effect is nothing but 2V by V. So 
here what we are doing is that we are actually comparing two velocities one is small v is nothing but the model velocity and capital V is nothing but the uh, small v is nothing but the velocity of the particles within the model it can be due to seepage velocity or it can be due to some wall or wall movement the soil particles are moving or it can be due to the particle velocity which are generated because of the some uh, seismic uh, perturbance. And then capital V is nothing but the model velocity, the velocity with which the model is rotating. Okay, so uh, if you further uh, you know analyze this one, it is actually generally said that if the uh, you know the the percentage error due to uh, Coriolis effect AC by AR, if it is say less than 10 percent, 10 percent, if that actually happens, uh, that means that uh, if it is less than uh, 10 percent, then uh, what it actually means is that. Uh, the Coriolis effect can be neglected. So, if the ratio of uh, V, uh, that means that uh, for uh, AC by AR less than uh, to be equal to 10 percent, uh, what we need to do is that the V has to be equal to 0 0.05 V. If this is less than or equal to 0 0.05 V, we can say that the Coriolis effect can be uh, you know negligible. That means that the model is not subjected to Coriolis effect. Now there are also uh, you know many uh, events uh, the tests which can actually take place let us say that we are actually investigating the effect of uh, you know uh, igniting a blast load on the uh, you know performance of uh, some structures uh, buried structures. So when the when the explosive is uh, 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 say subject uh, is ignited remotely then what you can see that the ejecta which is actually thrown with very very high velocities that means that these particles soil particles are thrown with very very high velocities. So in order to calculate this radius of the curvature subtended by these particles Fokorovsky and Fedorov in 1968 they have given an empirical expression they are saying that Coriolis acceleration is given by V square by RC V is the velocity with which the particle is actually is being throwing out and the RC is nothing but the radius of the curvature. So they try to compare the radius of the curvature subtended by the particles as well as with the radius of curvature uh, which is with which the model is being rotating from which what uh, they have deduced is that RC is equal to V square by AC and AC by substituting we get 2 V omega. So we can that RC is equal to V by 2 omega. So using omega is equal to V by R R R E what we can get is that V by 2 into V by R E by uh, taking R e this side we can write R c by R is equal to V by 2 V. So it actually appears is that if R c the radius of the curvature subtended by the particles is say uh, much 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 higher than uh, the radius of the uh, curvature of the centrifuge then the effective radius then V is supposed to be 2 V that means that the particle will be thrown with a very high velocity and it is uh, subjected to uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know and then it will hit the container boundary and then falls. So in general Coriolis effect cannot be neglected for any object moving within the velocity range that means that if the velocity is within 0 0.05 V to 2 V then we can say that Coriolis effect cannot be neglected if the velocity is actually more than 2 V then we can say that the Coriolis effect is non-existent that means that the model will not be affected by the Coriolis effect. So for example if you are having a model with uh, V is equal to 30 meter per second Coriolis effect can occur if the model velocity occur between so uh, as per our this thing 0 0.05 V 0 0.05 times 30 is 1.5 meter per second and this is 2 V that is so if the velocities of the moving object within the model is within 1.5 meter per second to 60 meter per second then we can say that the model is subjected to Coriolis effect otherwise the model is actually free from Coriolis effects. So in this particular lecture what we try to understand is that how the static equilibrium of centrifuge model can be uh, you know established and uh, also we also try to look into uh, some aspects of uh, you know how to calculate the effective radius and uh, then we discussed about uh, the, the limitations of centrifuge based physical modeling as we have said in this uh, particular slide where we have got uh, the non homogeneity and anisotropy of soil prof but of uh, soil profiles but with the advancement of the techniques this is also being uh, you know worked out now with the modern uh, physical modeling in geotechn geotechnical engineering and uh, some limitations of modeling tools and boundary effects and scale effects and the inconsistency of scale factors which we are going to discuss in detail and then we actually had a discussion on the Coriolis effect.